Hello and welcome to the Virtual Frontier, the podcast about virtual teams created by Virtual Team. Disclaimer, all of our interviews are conducted virtually. I'm Daniel, your host, and I'm part of the team here at the Virtual Frontier. Today, we are delighted to present you the first season of our new CO Q&A series here at the Virtual Frontier. Every week, I'm going to talk with our CEO, Manuel Pistner, about one specific topic that showed to be important to our community and listeners. Today's topic, how to scale a business. We are going to learn what scaling means, how to scale systematically, and what are the first practical steps when thinking about scaling a business. If you like the show, subscribe on YouTube, review it on Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, or any other platform you like for podcasting. All the links you can find below in the description. So, without further ado, let's dive into the first CEO Q&A session at the Virtual Frontier. Enjoy the conversation. Yeah, hello, Manu. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we have decided uh, to do a little new series here on the podcast uh, Q&A session uh, where we want to discuss and uh, discover new topics and questions that uh, might uh, um, Uh, come up uh, in different business scenarios and cases. Um, today, um, we um, have picked up the topic um, scaling business. And um, yeah, I would like di uh, directly to dive in um, to the topic and um, start with the first question. Um, can you explain me um, what is the meaning of the term scaling a business? Yeah, it's a good question because uh, I think that's a widely spread buzzword that many people use, but I assume that most people Uh, have a different understanding, at least, of what that means. So what it means for me is to expand the business, um, which means to, I mean, if you look at the business, the main purpose is to solve problems for clients. And if you want to scale a business, that means you need to, on the one side, attract more clients, and on the other side, increase your operations to serve more clients. And to be able to do that, it means you need to make implicit things that somehow happen in your culture that somehow help to solve problems of your clients, but they are not like um, explicitly available in the system. You need to make these information and these habits and these processes and procedures and routines explicitly available so that everyone can understand and have a clear set, set expectations about what they need to do in order to serve the clients and also what the marketing and sales team need to do in order to attract more clients. Basically, when a business scales, the, the main idea is to put more money into the sales funnel. That helps you win more clients. And on the other side, you can also increase the operations like cloud technology. That's scaling, right? Because you can easily ramp up the operations and serve more clients without distractions, without changing things, without increasing failure. And what do I need to know as a business owner, probably when I want to scale with my business and what are like important steps, uh, so, so at, um, so let's focus on, I mean, there are two main different types of businesses. The one is a product based business, right? That's a different kind of thing, but in a service business, um, I, I have most experience and I think I can explain from my experience what, what you need there. So the main part is to win clients with ease. Okay, Many service businesses struggle with winning clients because it's hard for them to understand how selling works. Selling works not in a way that you tell everyone what you do. You need to communicate what clients get or more explicitly, you need to communicate how your business solves problems for clients. That's just the main reason why clients buy at your business. There is, yeah, that's the purpose of your business. Okay. If you want to increase that, what you need to do first is to define your, your business strategy, which is explicitly defining your persona of your perfect target client. That's like your avatar. And from the persona derived, you create offers that help your perfect client solve problems. Okay, that's your business strategy, the persona of your perfect client and your offers that solve problems of your clients. And then I'm sure you most service businesses have different offers. You, you um, line them up into sequences. That means your client purchases one offer, then the other offer, then the next offer, and every offer solves a specific problem. That's your buyer's journey. Once you have that well-defined, 
the expectations for your clients are very well set because they know based on your offers what exactly they get. For your marketing team, it's well defined because they know which client they need to target and which offers to market, not by telling everyone, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, but by communicating value to clients and how these offers solve problems of clients. So that's the client acquisition side. The other side is to make explicitly available with a quality standard how your team needs to deliver the services your clients ordered. Explicitly, I prefer templates and checklists because then everyone knows what they have to do in order to deliver the services your clients want at a quality standard and not just depending on the performance and on how people in your business think they should do it, but how your business really wants to do it so that the expectations are clearly set on both sides for your clients and for your team. And that's when a business starts to scale. You were just mentioning in the beginning <clears throat> the perfect client. Um, I guess uh, some um, people or some companies uh, are happy with just any client. How, how can you find the perfect client? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I see that often. And that's when you have a business that is in reacting mode. That means you communicate what you do. And then some people, some clients, they accidentally come to you and accidentally they place an order and then you have a client. But way too often it happens that this is not the kind of people you really want to work with. They might pay the bills, they might pay money, but um, still it causes a lot of stress because expectations are not set well and maybe the culture doesn't fit very well, etc. So the perfect client really is the client that you love to work with. So when you sit down and define which kind or types of clients you really want and really write that down, and I'm sure everyone can come up with some ideas how the perfect client looks for you. Okay, if it is like, if it's a private person or a business person, if it is a marketing manager or a technical guy, if it is um, a person with a long-term experience or a beginner, if it is a person in a corporation or in an agency. So at least these attributes you should know. And then you can communicate with messages to attract people that resonate with these messages. And these are your perfect clients because they like or love what you communicate and what you talk about. And most importantly, they see and trust you that you with your offers can solve their problems. As you have already like experience in scaling with your own businesses, Are there any pitfalls and um, how uh, that you confronted on the way while scaling with your own businesses? And uh, could you share maybe some of those so our listeners um, could avoid them in the first place? Yeah, of course. I can only recommend, especially when you lead a service-based business, to not grow it and scale it until you systemized, first you structured and systemized your customer acquisition and your operations. Because if you don't have that, then it's just desperately trying to find clients and desperately trying to win talent that somehow serve your clients, but without well-managed expectations, without your business providing leadership for both your clients and your team, you just grow your problems if you grow your business. Right? You, you might see all these problems right now. Expectations are not well set. You don't have the right talent at the right time. You don't find clients. So if you just grow, you grow problems. And problems means you might have a new client. Then you hire new people. You hire them maybe full time. That increases your fixed cost. Then a client quits. You have high fixed costs, but no revenue anymore. That creates a lot of stress. And on the other side, you might win a new client but you don't have enough talent. Your client expects you to start tomorrow or maybe even yesterday, but simply you don't have enough talent. You hire juniors because you don't have any other alternative or you overutilize existing people that need to work over hours doing things they don't like and doing things they don't really have an experience with. And that causes a lot of stress on all edges and corners. If you grow that, it means just you grow your problem. So I would definitely sit down and first structure and systemize both customer acquisition and operations and then make it bigger. Yeah, that's what I just captured that um, preparation is a essential part in this, right? So Absolutely. if you have like uh, already like uh, a lot of problems or things that are not working really well, 
you should get away them first and then start with the structured uh, analyze and preparation for um, the scaling process. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, building a business is all about building a system that is optimized for solving specific problems. And just this sentence contains many things you need to do. You need to understand your problems you want to solve. You need to understand how the system works independently from you because typically the business owner is the most experienced person, but that's why this person is involved in all kinds of operations in every part of the business, telling people what to do and without the business owner telling people what to do, nothing gets done. So you need to make your knowledge as a business owner explicit, supported by structured workflows and help and support other people so that they can use the system you've built and solve problems for clients with a quality standard that you've created. Let's assume I have, I have already done the preparation part, uh, things are done well. Um, can I scale it any time with my business or is, is, are there any, uh, or is there anything else I need to take care of before? You, you can scale any part, any time, but what I really recommend is analyzing what is your current biggest bottleneck for your business to grow and scale. Often it's customer acquisition. So if you didn't find a reliable, systematic way to win new clients, online, of course, because offline is dead, then I would just focus on that. That's your biggest problem. You can grow and scale your operations, but if you have no reliable way to bring new clients to your business, you don't need to care about scalable, global operations. Okay. If your problem is, I mean, okay, if you solve that problem and you win clients systematically, you have enough clients and you can spend more money on advertising to attract new clients and you don't have enough talent or your profitability of delivering services to your clients is too low or you have too high workload, too much stress, not, a, not the right quality or you can't find talent fast enough, then focus on improving and systemizing and digitizing your operations because if they are structured, systemized, digitized, the next level is scale. And scaling means you can hire people from everywhere in the world, like you are in Mexico, Daniel. We, we just met once and uh, it works because you, you, get, you, you, you join an organization at FlashUp where you see which expectations we have, what you need to do. You, have, you structure the podcast, so things are well organized. And if things are well organized, you can even onboard talent like almost automatically or a self-service is if there are video onboardings, for example. So I would always focus on identifying, identifying your problem and then specifically solve this problem either in the operations or on the side of the customer acquisition. Mm -hmm. Now that we are like in having uncertain times or we're living in uncertain times, um, is there only scaling up or can I scale also down? Yeah, the definition of scaling from my perspective is scaling up and down because as you said, sometimes you have times of hyper growth and then the economy is up and everyone wants to innovate and buy. That means winning clients is easy, but winning the right talent at the right time is hard. Okay, so there is only mm. the way up. But in times of crisis, like when we had the lockdown during Corona and many businesses lost like 50% or more of their revenue, you definitely also need to scale down somehow in order to let the business survive, which is in the interest of clients and also people working with the business. So there is also scaling down. Yes, you cannot just, or I recommend not just growing the business with growing fixed costs, because that means you grow your risk with every growth step. Got you. Um, now, now that I know a little bit more about what uh, scaling is and what uh, scaling means, um, what would be the first practical steps when I go um, through this uh, scaling process with my business and what I need to take care of? I think you mentioned already some of the steps, but my, my, we can uh, repeat some and add, you add uh, the first steps so a business owner has a clear idea of what, what you can take on right yeah. away to get started with this process. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you want to do that because you want to solve some problems, right? Either you want more profitability, less stress, lower workloads, or win more clients to increase your revenues. So find out what it is first. And then you will realize that typically <laughs> the fish smells from the head. I don't mean you as a business owner. I mean your offers. 
the offers are the main thing that need to be well defined in the business because they set expectations for your clients and for your team. So defining offers, and if you lead a service business, you can think of your offers as kind of productized offers. So clearly bundled, clearly specified offers, like a marketing strategy that is clearly specified what the client gets and how that solves the problem of the client. So really write down what your specific offers are and how they stuck up to become the buyer's journey. And from there, okay, that, that is really the first step. And then you can see, okay, I want to win new clients. So based on your offers, you'll build your customer acquisition funnel, attracting your perfect client based on your persona and offering them your services by communicating value and how you solve the problems. If you want to have higher profitability in your business or reduce your workload, then you take your offers and define things that I call assembly lines, which are really, I mean, you can, you can see that like a Trello board with well-defined steps, how these offers will be executed so that the client get the results they want. Okay, for a, if, you, if you're talking about a software development team, the assembly line process is Scrum, okay? You have a sprint planning, you have daily meetings, you have a sprint review, you have a retrospective, and you start again, you have your sprint planning, et cetera. If you want to develop, for example, a marketing strategy or set up a campaign, a marketing campaign for your client, you also have well-defined steps, okay? These are your work items, processing a workflow, that's your assembly line, and then add like checklists that people can follow when it comes to what you need to do to start with this work item, what you need to do when you execute it, and what do you need to ensure it's done so that it's really done. That's your definition of ready, definition of execution, and definition of done. And then things become systemized, well-structured, and everyone can execute it because you can even create videos and explain how it works. And then you can provide onboarding as a self-service. And then things start to scale. So start with your offers and then decide what's your biggest problem and then solve that. Well, that was uh, really insightful, Manuel. Thank you very much for that uh, information about uh, scaling your business. Um, when people would like to find out more about this topic, um, can they get in touch with you? Um, what you would recommend uh, uh, taking the next step into practice? Uh, what would be helpful? Yeah, you can connect with me on, on LinkedIn. You can um, subscribe to our FlashUp YouTube channel. You can go to flashhub.io slash training. There is a complete free virtual business builder training that helps you to understand the exact opportunities of growing and scaling a business with virtual teams, even with global freelancers to build an on-demand scalable workforce. I think that gives you a good starting point to understand the opportunity behind virtual teams and how to scale your business with these. Sure, that we will do. And all the links you can find in the show notes below later on. Manuel, thank you very much for, for um, having this conversation with me today. I think we're going to repeat it uh, um, now best every week um, to get some answers out um, to burning questions for, for business owners. And um, um, yeah, thank you again for taking the time. Yeah, and thank you very much for having me here. If you guys that listen to this podcast, you have some questions or ideas, just leave a comment below this video if you see the video or below um, the audio if you see that on our blog and I'm happy to catch up this question and answer it in the next episode. Cool. Bye bye. I want to thank Manuel for joining us today on this episode. Now we have a better idea about how scaling works and what are important steps to consider. If you want to learn more about how to scale with your business at any time, and make work better, visit flashup.io slash start to get free access to the virtual business builder training. Learn in this free training how you can build, grow and scale your business with virtual teams and global freelancers. You can subscribe to the Virtual Frontier on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube or wherever podcasts can be found. And while you're there, you can leave us a review. Please support us on Patreon so we can keep improving the show and your experience. On behalf of the team here at the Virtual Frontier, I want to thank you for listening. So until next episode, keep exploring new frontiers.